Okay, hi everybody. Welcome to Phil and Dave's Excellent Adventures. Just Dave here. Today I'm talking about the movie Oppenheimer. This is going to be a spoiler review, so if you have not seen the movie yet and you are concerned about spoilers, I would suggest you go ahead and watch the movie first before you watch this review. Uh, so Oppenheimer is uh, the story about J. Robert Oppenheimer and uh, his uh, sort of uh, involvement in the creation of the uh, first nuclear bomb to be dropped on, uh, well, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the first two. So, yeah, it's all about his life uh, sort of from uh, relatively the beginning of that uh, through on into, the, I think, the 60s. Uh, there's sort of a hearing and everything else about it. Uh, as far as what I liked about the movie, overall, the cast is amazing. Killian Murphy as uh, Oppenheimer is great. He sort of has that exact gaunt kind of look to him, and uh, he's got this amazing performance. He even sort of sounds like him when he talks. And uh, there's this kind of very haunted look to his eyes, and the way that he's able to convey a lot of emotions without even saying anything is is really impressive. He, he's great in this. Florence Pugh is always great. I love Florence Pugh. Anything she's ever in, she's always good. Uh, I wish we got a little more of her in this, but she's every scene she's in is great. Emily Blunt, also really good in this. I loved her a lot. There's so many people in this movie. Uh, Matt Damon also stood out a lot as, as a great role as this uh, uh, colonel, I suppose. Uh, although I don't know if I 100% buy Matt Damon as being in the military, although he's played it a couple of times. But yeah, I thought overall he was great. He's got a couple of great scenes. Josh Hartnett is in this quite a bit. I'm glad he's got kind of a career resurgence going on here. David Krumholtz is almost unrecognizable. Rami Malek shows up briefly. Uh, Gary Oldman. Uh, as uh, as uh, Truman and uh, David Dismalchin is in here, and of course uh, another standout is Robert Downey Jr. as uh, what's the guy's name? Strauss? Yeah, Strauss. Yeah, well, what a jerk that guy! But he's great, great performance, and he just you hate him so much all, all the way through. He, he's awesome. Uh, really like the music in this. I, I know sometimes Christopher Nolan's music is kind of hit or miss uh, for me. Hans Zimmer does a lot of his stuff, I think, and he does a lot of banging and clanging and, and loud noises and stuff that I don't, I don't really dig. Uh, this one was done by uh, Ludwig Göransson. Ludwig Göransson. Uh, he, he did Tenet before this, uh, Creed one and two, Venom, um, some other stuff. Uh, I liked it for the most part. I thought it was pretty good. Uh, I thought the movie, the practical effects throughout the movie were amazing. I really, in particular, liked all of the scenes of, you know, the the, the bomb going off or, or the sort of uh, transitional kind of interstitials they had with the, the the particles floating and sort of the imitation of of the uh, the waves and everything else. Whatever they're doing to to represent uh, the the bomb or, or the bomb going off was really cool, and I really enjoyed the the visual kind of spectacle of that. And it looked great on on screen. Uh, the writing throughout is great, not only the story, but the dialogue. There's some really great moments of dialogue and sort of arguments between people and everything. But as the actual story itself is just fascinating. It's something I've always been interested in. I think uh, most people who are vaguely interested in history are interested in uh, Robert Oppenheimer and the bomb and all that stuff. So, yeah, very, very fascinating story. And, and even some stuff that I didn't exactly know about a uh, story, I was able to learn from this, which hopefully was true. I'll, I'll have to look up to make sure. But uh, yeah, uh, I thought that was great. I really liked, you know, sort of the whole uh, impact of the communist witch hunts uh, of the 50s and seeing kind of, or the 40s, 50s, and seeing how that impacted a lot of people, a lot of respected people who, you know, all of a sudden their lives and careers are being called into question because, um, you know, uh, what's his name? Uh, McCarthy and all those guys were, you know, going after the communists. Uh, which, you know, nowadays looks a, a little silly, but we've still got people who are upset about communism and socialism. And anytime you say anything vaguely communist, they get all upset. So it, it's still it's it's weird that 60, 70 years later, that stuff still is, you know, applies. Um, I thought uh, the entire stuff of dealing with the aftermath of dropping the bomb and how that affected him uh psychologically was really interesting and i'm sure it's, it's something that affected a lot of people as well um, i really liked how the movie goes into a lot about just sort of like pride and ego and especially dealing with people on this this very high intellectual kind of level and and the fact that you know that they're like well did strauss do this well you did embarrass him well, that was six years ago but like yeah that's 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 kind of how it works and there's a lot in this movie about just like masculinity and and particularly the way that men behave like at a at a very highly professional level you know there's a lot of times where emily blunt his wife I I kitty is is like saying like why did you shake that guy's hand why didn't you call them out why won't you stand up for yourself and it's interesting because in some ways portrays Oppenheimer as, as maybe a coward or maybe someone who didn't uh, stand up for himself as well but even then she she says maybe he's doing it to himself uh, to sort of martyr himself or to make himself feel better for feeling bad about you know creating the bomb uh, all very fascinating very interesting stuff uh, i really liked it a lot i really liked all the stuff with albert einstein the way they kind of uh, have throughout the movie is a sort of what did he say to einstein what were they talking about what did they say and when they finally do reveal it it's, it's very satisfying I, I i liked it a lot and einstein was of course 
right as he was he was right about almost everything so that that's not that surprising i think um and i think it was really satisfying to see strauss's come up in this, you know because the movie goes and you see they, they do the test of the trinity and you're like okay cool we're, we're good now right credits are gonna roll no now there's like an hour left okay well, what's that gonna be uh they'd kind of already been doing this whole hearing and stuff but it was worth it at first i was, I was ready to say you know what we didn't need this this could have been two separate movies you could have cut the movie right there but no no it was very satisfying see Strauss has come up in, and, and I really appreciate it. And Downey's performance of it and Aaron Reich's performance in that scene as well. All really good, really, really great stuff. As far as what I didn't like about the movie, I, you know, I hate to say it, um, but uh, some people have said, and some religious groups have kind of said that the, the sex scenes seem a little out of place. And I kind of agree. I mean, I love sex scenes. I love Florence Pugh. She looks great. I, please put as many sex scenes in movies as possible. I'm I'm all for men and women all the time. I'm sick of this prudish stuff. But it did it did kind of seem a little out of place to me. I mean, like I don't know. I got it. It was like okay, they're talking and they're kind of flirting. You're like oh, okay, I can see they're and then boom, next scene they're having sex. And you're like oh okay, that's okay, cool. But I almost feel like they kind of did it because they're like, hey man, it's a long, boring three hour movie. We got to have some sex in there. We got to get we got to get some boobs in there. You know um so yeah i don't know just even a little and it was just a little odd too how somebody else pointed out how like in the middle of it, it seems the way it's edited and i'm not quite sure maybe they had finished or maybe not, but it almost seems like they're like in the middle of of having sex she stops gets up and grabs a book and it's like read this sanskrit to me and it's like okay and i i i'm and, you know, I'm trying to get what was going on there. And maybe it wasn't. Maybe they had sort of finished and were sort of, uh, you know, and, and then they started again. Or or maybe, hey, maybe this is something that really happened. And I'm, I can maybe imagine a scenario in which somebody would stop and be like, oh, no, I had an idea. I, I want to do this thing. But it did seem a little odd and it did seem a little weird the way that they did it. Now, the actual sex scene with uh, with Florence Pugh and him in the the little room where he's getting, getting interrogated, that one kind of made more sense to me because it was sort of showing his wife and how she had to kind of relive this and imagine this and everything that, that made a little bit more sense. But the other ones, I was like, I don't know, just maybe took me out of the movie a little bit. I don't really like the, the non-linear storytelling. I never really liked that. I will say in this movie, it didn't bother me that much. I had a decent, you know, I, I didn't really have a hard time following what was going on or what time period we were in. They did the stuff in black and white, which is actually like the more recent stuff. <laughs> and then the, the stuff farther in the past in, in color, which is a little odd choice, but uh, I was able to follow it. It wasn't that confusing, but I do wonder, did they need to do that? Well, and again, was this another thing like with the sex where they're like, you know, it's a little boring. Let's um, let's go non-linear. Let's mix it up a little bit. You know, keep you guessing. It's like, I don't know if you needed to do that, you know? Um, but again, I, I love boring movies with people sitting in rooms and talking about psychological or not psychological, uh, philosophical kind of questions. That That's really kind of all I ever want. So I would have been fine with it. A uh, movie is a little long. It's about three hours long, but honestly, it didn't bother me too much. It, it didn't. But it is a weird thing when a movie is this long, you almost want to watch it at home. So you can take a break if you need to, you know, sit down, grab a snack, go to the bathroom. Um, but also something this huge and this, this grand on an IMAX scale, you want to see it in a big screen with, with a big uh, thing. So it's, it's kind of like you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't kind of thing. Um, other people have pointed out the the portrayal of women in this could be better, and I, I do agree. Uh, I think someone said that a woman doesn't talk until 20 minutes into the movie, and I think that's right. And then like two minutes later, she's naked and having sex. And again, I mean, that's fine. It doesn't really matter. I may not have even noticed that if nobody said it, but it is between, you know, I mean, there's basically three women who, who are fairly prominently in this movie. Uh, Florence Pugh, uh, Emily Blunt, and... Uh, Olivia Thurlby, who was also great. And I really liked her character a lot. And there was a little back and forth between like, we don't know the effect it might have on, on your, you know, uh, genitals. And she's like, your genitals are more exposed than mine are. That was great. That was a fun moment there. But uh, yeah, I think she, she's probably actually the one who, who maybe has the best treatment because then his wife is just like this alcoholic who is a bad mom. And there is a little bit more to her than that. She clearly has postpartum depression and all of that. But, you know, you could easily sum it up as being like, oh, Florence Pugh is just like a sex object and his wife is just like a a drunk who doesn't want to take care of their kids like i don't know maybe could have done a little bit bad. it's not it's not that bad but yeah it, it would have been nice to see it just i guess a little bit more from them a little bit more what's going on with with in particular florence pugh's character because i like her i think she's a good actor um and and there's another thing people pointed out that uh the movie uh, in real life they, they displaced the natives who were living there in um new mexico and they do briefly mention in the movie where uh, Truman's like, what should we do? And he's like, we'll give it back to the Indians. And he's like, no, we need this land because we've got to keep building these bombs and stuff. But uh, yeah, 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 there's just an issue with that, which I, I just wish they would have maybe brought it up in the movie a little bit more and talked about it a little bit more. But 
They had a lot going on in this movie. Uh, so yeah, then that movie is directed by Christopher Nolan. He's famous for doing the Batman movies and uh, uh, Memento, Insomnia, uh, The Prestige, uh, Dunkirk, uh, Tenant, all those movies. Um, I like him. And I think uh, probably Memento is still my favorite of all of his movies, but I really like The Prestige as well. I still haven't seen Tenet. I'll, I'll get around to it one of these days. Um, it was written by him as well. Uh, it's based on a book called American Prometheus by Kai Bird and Martin J. Sherwin. I haven't read the book, but uh, I guess it's good. Uh, budget on this was $100 million, relatively low budget considering, uh, but it had no CGI really. It was all practical effects. And I have a feeling a lot of the budget went to the cast because it's a huge cast. Um, box office, uh, so far it's been $174 million worldwide, $80 million domestic, so it's doing fine. It's going to be making money uh, by next weekend, I'm sure. Rotten Tomatoes on this one, much like Barbie, uh, it, the critics and the audience are in agreement, 94 for both, which is, is kind of funny uh, that you have the exact same number. Uh, other than that, like I said, there's so many actors in here. Almost everyone I recognize. Almost everyone, you're like, oh, I had second. Oh, I had second. Like Tim Decay from uh, White Collar shows up. Kenneth Branagh is in here. Tony Goldwyn. Uh, Jack Quaid plays uh, Richard Feynman, although he barely talks at all. I think he has like only a couple lines toward the end, but he's always playing the bongos. We've got Scotty Grimes in here, which is great. Scotty Grimes from uh, Critters, of course, and uh, American Dad, so... Love that. Good stuff. Uh, like I said, there's no CGI at all in the film. That doesn't mean there's no special effects at all. They did a lot of stuff in camera where they would, you know, uh, do various different things to sort of create those effects. I don't know what they are. I watched a thing and I don't remember. But either way, interesting scene. I am curious to see exactly how they did it. Uh, there's no drums at all in the score. I guess uh, the Ludwig Göransson and uh, Christopher Nolan thought that was a little too militaristic and they didn't want to sort of, they didn't think that fit for Oppenheimer. Kind of an interesting idea. Uh, the movie was filmed entirely in IMAX, which is funny because a fair amount of it is just people sitting in rooms talking, but it looks great. Uh, oh, it, Oppenheimer's security clearance was uh, posthumously reinstated last year in December of last year. So, hey, he eventually got it after he was dead. Uh, this is one of the, the first Christopher Nolan movies since um, Insomnia. I think that doesn't have Michael Caine in it, which is interesting. And uh, this was produced by James Woods, which I just thought was weird. The guy who had the rights to it was friends with him, I think. So that's why he was involved, but just didn't expect that. Uh, so yeah, as far as my score on this one, I'm going to give it a, a nine out of 10. I think it's it's unquestionably a masterpiece. It's an amazing movie. It's great to look at. Maybe a little slow at times. Maybe could have used a little bit more editing and women could have been portrayed a little bit better in it. But other than that, I thought it was a great movie and I really, really enjoyed it. So if you saw the movie, let me know what you thought of it down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great night. I will see you here again next week.